of Earth. The name's Nukem. Duke Nukem. This is Happy T. Cut! This is Albert Wesker. I'm Hatchworth from Steam Powered Giraffe. You're listening to The Rock Show on VoxV.com! Listen to Conrad and Lucas! Take geek culture off the shelf and show it to you! The spine from Steam Powered Giraffe says so. Don't change the channel. Because I know where to find it, Bob. <sighs> Hail to the king, baby. Hello, everybody. I'm Conrad. I'm Lucas. And this is The Rack Show, which hopefully you're watching on the Voxby YouTube channel, Voxby.com, and TheRackShow.com. You might tell that we're in another different awesome locale. We've been busy this month. We have. We've been moving around a lot, which is yeah. awesome. Um, we're in one of our partners in crime, um, Second and Charles, which is a second-hand used bookstore. They also sell new books. They also sell guitars and memorabilia and comic books and video games and new and used. They sell all kinds of stuff here. They also buy all that stuff back. So if you have that, you can bring that here. It's in Auburn Hills near um, Great Lakes Crossing. Maybe make a quick buck. Maybe you can use it for store credit to buy all the cool stuff that Lucas just mentioned. And we bought, we've both sold back. So it's, Yeah, it's, I have about 80 bucks in credit that I'm yeah, sitting on right cool. now. That's pretty um, cool. So I went through the store today before we started the show to get some stuff here. Yes, show off that. This, is, this is what I thought was funny. So this is one of the used ones. Um, Throwback to middle school. I this, thought this is was very cool. 1995 it right is, here. It is called Pog Classics. <laughs> and and if you guys remember all, all the 90s children out there, as I am one, I opened this up and I saw it. It has the mat board in there. And and anything you buy here used is complete. Oh, is this a slammer? Double check. Yeah, there's slammers, Slammer. Marvel Hero Slammers, which probably are actually worth something now. <laughs> but it has the, the Pog board and a bunch of Pogs. Let me see some of the Pogs. Are there any 8-Ball Pogs in there? 8-Balls were, the, were where it's at. I had a couple 8-Ball Pogs, actually. There's an Electra. And then the instruction books. Electra. Like, you needed an instruction book for <laughs> Pog. If we had... I want to I wanna see if I can't win any Pogs from you. Okay. This is the Slammer. I have a marble, but they were metal ones. You remember having metal ones? Yeah, they're really. Yeah. I sucked at this game. I'm gonna the Daredevil one. I just finished that season. Okay. You did you? Yeah, it's good. Okay. I'm gonna see. I suck at pogs. I well, always have. Not, Will, can you see this? Down here is the microphone in the way. There you go. There we go. Okay. I don't remember how to. I don't play, know. If, I don't know if you do this way or this way. I'm gonna try it. All right. And then whichever ones you flip over, you keep. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah, and then you, as you flip over the most, you win. I suck. Steak it. But this. now you have to leave it like that. Do you? Right? I don't know. I don't think you. I haven't played this in two decades, man. man I have no idea. Turn. And I, Lucas probably just won the entire thing. Yeah. Anyway, so Pogs are fun. Um, 90s licious. They should bring this back. This was a fad that they should bring back. It, fads go full circle. I wonder if there's a Pog app. That would be cool. Probably. Actually, it wouldn't be cool. It's sort of pointless. <laughs> Um, so there's this pop thing. It goes for five bucks. It's, that's a deal. That is a deal. We have another item that is not worth five dollars. Actually, worth much, much more. And it's well, really awesome. Actually, before oh, you're gonna jump that, into that, that, that goes into this. Okay. There, we all know Cards Against Humanity or Apples to Apples, those types of games. Um, this game plays off Cards Against Humanity. It's called Crabs Adjust the Humidity. Crabs Adjust Humidity. No humidity. It's the same thing. I guess you could mix the decks together. It's another funny deck that they An have. An example, I don't care what people say, blank is not a crime. And the cards are? Uh, wearing a blue fox fur suit on casual Friday, spiking the juice at AA, barfing into a tiny bejeweled handbag, giving your pet lamb a Brazilian, that's terrible, I'm not reading the rest. Okay. So it's yeah, kind of it's very similar. Um, yeah. They have, I think, three volumes that are being sold here. These go for fourteen ninety five here at Second and Charles. Second and Charles in Michigan is located up near Great Lakes Crossing, off of Baldwin Road. So check it out. It's pretty awesome. It's a pretty great place. We're gonna be here this upcoming week. Yeah. Um, May Next 9th. Saturday. Oh, I, sorry, I, I forgot a Thor Pog. There you go. May 9th, we'll be up here, right? Yeah, for our game day, where we show up and we bring games from our uh, library as well as Second and Charles Library, and we teach people how to play them. And this isn't your mom and pop checker monopoly kind of thing. Uh, these are games that are very fun and maybe a little intimidating if you don't really know how to approach them, and that's where we come in. We're nice guys, and we'll teach you how to play. Yup. And so will the rest of the Vox V staff. Yep. And it's a lot of fun. Um, 
we I don't know we've done a bunch of them since November. Yeah, we've done a few. Um, so they're a lot of fun. So check, come up here, check it out if you like it. Buy some games while you're up here because they sell board games all as well. well. So it's a great place to come and just look and spend the afternoon and peruse their shelves to find these hidden gems. Um, but the reason why we're here today is Free Comic Book Day. It is May second. Oh, there's more pogs. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That's, that's like the '90s. They were just sorry. everywhere. Remember? Everywhere. They would get under your pillow and your bed. Yeah, we managed to grab some of the free comic books that are up for grabs, not only here at Second and Charles, but at any local comic book store, which is pretty awesome. Bob's Burgers, which is probably one I'm going to keep for myself. Uh, we have the 10-year uh, celebration of Free Comic Book Day. We also have Savage Dragon. We have Fight Club, the comic book. We have SpongeBob, which I'm not going to do an impression of, but I can. Uh, we have Dark Circle Comics, which I'm actually not a... It's a new one coming yeah, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. It's the first I will have one to check of that, that series. Out. And then, of course, we got the Divergence uh, uh, DC, which I don't think it's Divergence like like the like the book, right? No, because I don't remember robots in it. Or Superman. Glowing, or glowing Superman. Oh, yeah, that is Superman. Yeah. I see him down there. I don't know. Let's see. Um, any, there doesn't look like there's any teen drama about them not having fear. Um, so no, not the divergence that we've come to know and have no opinion about because I haven't seen it. But so, Comic Book Day is great. Look what they have in here. This is the the anniversary edition. They have, I think it's called Mouse Guard. Yes, Mouse Guard is amazing. Which is the, the guy named David Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. He is a Michigander, I believe, um, in the area that we're based out of. And he, his comic is in here. Yes, it's, it's about the, it's about an epic trial of sword and lance uh, among mice. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's really great and it's well, very the well art drawn. Is amazing, yeah. and he also does the story. Um, I love his artwork, but he's he has um, said he wants to be on the show. So well then, that's cool. I think we should get Thanks, him on the Dave. show. And we'll now, see you soon. do we want to touch base on this? Oh, because yes. this is what so, I got excited about, and you're like, oh, we can't talk about that yet because it's going to go into this. Is Daredevil one fifty eight? Uh, May's issue, probably back in the 80s at least. Um, I don't know, when is this? Is it the 80s? How do you can tell you about comic books? Um, let's see. Anyways, um, it's Daredevil. Um, who is the guy that's there? Do you know that? 1979. I don't Me know. And Will were asking Maybe who the that... Skulker? I have no idea who that is, actually. I have no clue. If you know, let us and know. Obviously... You can go to all of our social medias. You can find us on, uh, Facebook, uh, The Rack Show. You search for us also on Instagram and Twitter, The Rack Show, all one word. But yeah, this is actually an 8.5. On the grading scale. On the grading scale on CGC, uh, it's amazing, so it's very well kept. Here at um, Second Second Charles, Charles, it's running about 70 bucks, I believe. Yes. And Um, I'm actually afraid to touch this anymore because I don't want to have to buy it, even though it's gorgeous. You could come up here and find and sell this kind of stuff, and they love it. Um, It's a great place, like I said, to peruse, and uh, yeah, no, this is great. I don't never... I don't want this, but I want a comic book <laughs> in a piece of plastic. That's I'm, really ritzy? Yeah, well, no, I, I put that in plastic. Nobody knows. Like, sure. Nobody knows. Who it's cares? like a free comic. It's not, it's not $100. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Somebody's a little more versed in the comic verse than us is our guest. Um, and you told us how to say your last name. And I'm going to try to say it, and you let me know if I say it correctly. If not, I'm sorry, but remember okay. to be kind, and then I bought you Starbucks today, okay? <laughs> Kelly, um, uh, Gilroy? Yes, Gillery. Gillery! Gillery. Oh, so close! So okay. Oh, uh, She's a comic book yeah, illustrator, and the owner of, let me see, Asher Collective? The That's Asher right. Collective. The Asher Collective. I like when people say that. The Asher Collective. It's I really say cool. the Asher Collective, because it's an <laughs> awesome name. <laughs> Um, but you, and, and, and I, I was reading your comics actually, it's on my tablet right now. If I open up my tablet and I navigate to it, it her stuff comes right up. Um, because I was reading this last night at work and it's some pretty cool stuff. This, what I have right now, is Blood Money. Um, one of four uh, we- comics that you have out there right now, published comics, or? Blood Money, Chance Human Resources, Odyssey 1 and 2, Love and All Forms. Uh, the Other World's not done, but it's illustrated. Mm-hmm. Something else I've done and I can't remember. So that's six, and okay. then then there's a novel version of Blood Money, which is completely done and up on Amazon. So that's seven. Then there are, is an, an anthology that I wrote contributed to. So it's eight publications. Okay, well since 2013. Didn't mean to cut your publications in <laughs> okay, half. I no, apologize. No, it's okay. <laughs> but it just goes to show you're 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 out there, which is awesome. So um, free comic book day, probably pretty cool to you, right? <laughs> 
I love uh, coming to Free Comic Book Day and seeing, you know, what's new and what's out there. Um, the way that I approach comics is that I don't read comics quite often. Some writers don't read other books when they write, mm -hmm. so I don't really read comics that much when I create comics. I like to approach it as a practice mm -hmm. and problem solve as we go along. Very cool. Yeah, you, um, and, and now tell us how uh, the Asher Collective came to be. Um, you or just, what is it first? Yeah. Asher Collective basically is an art and a comic collective in publishing. We publish our own uh, comics. Some of them are in-house. Some of them are comics that clients will pay us to do. So, for example, my work on Odyssey and Transhuman Resources is paid work. Mm -hmm. And then the client buys that, buys the full rights, and then takes the art and the comics away. And then they have it. So if you want them, you have to go to that person and buy them. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't carry that. Um, and then also we do book illustration, book covers, um, and we're not really into editing yet, but uh, I've done some ghostwriting. So some people, when they want me to write a script for a comic or for something, then I will do that. Um, out of Asher Collective, I've also written for the Detroit News. I've written an editorial. Um, I also end up representing Asher Collective when I go on television to talk about like a political essay new detroit which kind of blew up uh last year mm -hmm. so that basically were all things written and illustrated and also fine art because i was with red bull house of art recently very cool now you i was talking i'm trying to decide what we should talk about first because i, I <laughs> you and i rode up together and we just talked the entire way and it's about yeah. an hour drive can well, we, can blood we, money. Yeah, can we talk about, about blood, blood money? Road sure, to Detroit. Yeah, because yeah. this is—I'm the one that met you originally at a convention of sorts. It was like a, a swap meet or something and like that. I think that. I gave you a copy. Or you no. bought it. No. No. You gave me some posters. Oh. Um, which I have still. Okay. They're they're somewhere in my office, but at that time you were you were um, pushing blood money road to Detroit, which I think was two years ago. Does that sound right? The was summer that? of 2013? I wasn't there. I, I can't help for this conversation. Sorry. Was it this? I guess so. Yeah, 13. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we met up at, I think, Fantasticon or something like that. And I was meeting people for the show. And you gave me, um, you talked to me about Blood Money Road to Detroit. And I asked some questions. And here we are. And we just happened to be running out of comics then. Uh, we printed about 200 of Blood Money. And they're, they're gone. They're completely gone now. You can't even find a physical copy anymore. Oh, wow. Now, they've been picked up by Underbelly Comics and will probably be fundraising again to get it reprinted. But uh, we did it. Uh, we did a fundraiser this time, but it, it didn't really get out that well. Um, but it's with it, basically a distribution company, and Canada has the rights to blood money now to distribute it for a little while. Wow. Well, I know if people really want to read it, they can go to uh, AsherCollective.com, which yep. is where actually I went and, and got my digital copy, um, and that's what I've been reading on, and it's been really cool. Um, it's a story about two guys that go to collect funds in Detroit, and one of them's a vampire, but you don't even know that for the first few pages. Like, I was telling you about, I like how you kind of reveal things as you go through the story. Like, you don't know... And tell me if any of this is a spoiler, but you don't know one of them's a vampire until a few pages in. Spoiler. You don't know that it's set in the future until a few pages in. Uh -huh. um, you don't know they're in Detroit until a few pages in. Like it, it's really kind of like you read and it reveal, read, reveal, reveal. I like that writing style. Yes. You're sort of leaving breadcrumbs. Yeah. Yeah. That reveal the story. That's very cool. We like the organic approach to writing, which means I don't do a lot of exposition. We do necessary exposition as we go along, and. We tell you what you need to know, but everything else, it just needs to be a surprise because um, I just don't like handing people things. Mm -hmm. I like That's cool. it When you experience something in real life, you often don't have the explanation for what happens in your life. So that's the that's the view that we take with comics mm -hmm. and with writing. And you do it in such a way that you don't feel lost, like you're, you're just not completely clueless. You just know that, like, if you keep reading, it will be revealed to you. You're not like, well, why is this happening? I'm confused. I'm done with this. It's just like, okay, so that's, there's, you know, put a, put a pin in this here because I know this is going to be important. And then it's revealed here, which is great. Um, and the um, Blood Money um, is 
a it could be a standalone, which is why you released it first. But chronologically, in that um, universe, I guess for sake of, uh, of, of the word, it is the um, third issue in in the series. You, and this spans across sixty plus years, right? Um, actually, four hundred years. Oh, oh four hundred. Wow. Okay. Well, I, sorry. I know that the the it's one okay. the one part on the Asher Collective uh, uh, website is the from nineteen seventy one, I believe. Yeah. And I know that Blood Money takes place in nine two thousand twenty two thousand thirty two. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are they the same characters? Um. Is that a spoiler? It might be. a spoiler. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. It might be a spoiler. So, how many of them are up on your website? The ser- of the series. We have Blood Money, and I actually have a preview of the sequel. If you read Blood Money, we have the sequel, which is The Other World. I've got that with me. Now, I'm the person who is the illustrator and the creative director. My co-founder, Jamie Acasella, who lives in... Racachella lives in... She's going to kill me for mispronouncing her name. <laughs> Sorry. Um, she lives in New Jersey, and she writes with me, and she has created half of the characters I have half, and we just smash them together hold secrets against each other, and we're basically playing chess as we write together. Oh, that's neat. That's it's a really, really cool writing really style. It's really, really fun because she, we have different styles. I'm the one who puts social commentary and populates the background of a world with little <clears throat> details with people, with crowds and, and people. That's that's my presence in writing. I like to create talk about the culture. I like to insert commentary. All the political commentary in Blood Money is me saying things mm-hmm. and saying, I want to put this here, I want to put this there, so that you have a little feel of things. So Jamie is the kind of person who will direct a character. She'll do the, um, I do research for things, but then she was also really, really good about research and mental illness and, and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, and she'll take something and she'll plan it and she'll put a secret and she'll sit on it for a year. And then all of a sudden there's this big plot twist and I'm just like, girl, <laughs> you got me again. <laughs> yeah, um, and you really notice that um, within the first few pages of Blood Money, you have a scene where um, one of the main characters, um, French, help me out, sorry, because I know I said this wrong, just, um, is in the shower, and he's listening to NPR, which I'm guessing is Michigan Public Radio. I did that part. The radio. Yeah, um, and, and you talk about, uh, it, well, uh, tell us tell us what you talk about in, because I, I know um, that it has to deal with... Uh, um, Quick and loans, kind of. Oh boy! Uh, you don't use anything by name, <laughs> I but say you loans definitely talk. Yeah, you definitely talk about uh, how you feel about current events now, and kind of almost predict the way you think they're going to go if they stay on that track. Now, this, I think, this is very years. relevant because now they're being pursued by the government mm-hmm. for, you know, they're being sued, um, you know, for alleged fraud. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Oh, he's there's been, more to it. Yeah. He's been in it a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a large corporation. They're yeah. always going to be in And something. also, he insulted some journalists on Twitter who are now kind of digging in on him, and now this is blown up and snowballed to a Gawker article, which was a really big takedown. And uh, I'm just I'm so proud of the writing community right now because, mm-hmm. boy, oh, man, he, he should have never insulted them. So, Don't do it. <laughs> so explain, explain well, the what, scene. What did, this, like, what did the scene say? Yeah. Um, so what the scene said is that he's in the Second shower, right and up, what yeah. NPR is saying is that um, that they have finally, it's 2032, and they are finally going to construct the rail system. because when at the, A light rail system. A light rail future, system. Yeah. So at that point, I was basically making fun of the fact that they keep delaying these public transportation plans and delaying, cutting them down and delaying them, and now 15 years into the future, they have finally implemented it. And I've also hinted at the fact that we still had an emergency manager. I saw in the that city, yeah, and we never got rid of them. And that's very funny because we basically are, are getting somebody to be our emergency manager, not in actual form, literally, but in Lansing. They're trying to hold on to that power and take some power away from city council. And I just thought they're never going to let this go. They are never going to fully give us control. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's a one page spread. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, and it you know the character is in the shower. It, it's really it's it's, it's really kind of a good way to kind of paint a broader picture of Detroit at that time because this has nothing to do with what's, what's happening with him, right? It's just that's your commentary. That's what he you're is a using. Tourist in their world. Yes. Yeah. Because because the, the characters are sitting from New York. Yes. Long Island. Long Island. Okay. So um, it's just, uh, I noticed that, I was like, that is just too cool. And then at the end, it talks about how 
With the light rail system, they're finally implementing it, and now immediately a political group is going to pounce on them with a lawsuit to delay the plans, which always happens mm -hmm. in Detroit with something. Somebody tries to sue the government to stop whatever is going on. It's like, it just delays things. I had to go back to my page, and I don't want to lose my spot, so <laughs> I'm going okay. to read it more later. Um, there are other predictions I made. Um, basically, even especially in the novel version, where I talk about how we put all this hope and all of our eggs in a basket with Loans International, and then they ended up having to leave the city for some reason, and what it does is it causes uh, some people to vacate downtown, and uh, which is coming up now because Quicken Loans, if they are successfully sued by the government, then they will lose 35% of their business. And then we're gonna have to ask ourselves, what happens if something has gone horribly wrong with Quicken Loans that we didn't expect, what are we gonna do if we lose them? What well, are we gonna do if we lose some of their business? So Dan Gilbert's company isn't just Quicken Loans. I know. Um, so even if they do sell, if they if they successfully sue Quicken Loans, he has many other legs to stand on. But it's about morale. Wow. And if people, some people went downtown because they felt that it was okay to stay downtown. Yeah. And if absolutely. they feel that thing, the ship is somehow going to sink in any capacity, they will leave. Well, it's happened before. Yeah. In downtown Detroit, yeah. it happens every and twenty years almost. I said that in this. I said that even if that happens. There are going to be people who stay this time, and they're going. We're gonna, you know. There was people that out. stayed last time, and they're still there. When do you say last time? What do you mean? Well, there, every single time we 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 go through Renaissance. We went through Renaissance in in the eighties, and so before that, about, okay. we were we were motor uh, we were uh, Motown, and then before that, we were the Motor City. We so there's. I did a documentary on this. It was on Ovation. Okay. And in each era. We built up Detroit to be something, and we moved back down there. So what and then we, is then we, we decided to move out of there again. Then, then, then we went back down there, and then we decided to move back out. And then they built the Renaissance Center in the '70s, I believe, and we went through the Renaissance in the '80s. What I also say in the book is that basically we're going to take control if that ever ha that that Detroit takes control of Campus Martius. Somebody else picks up the slack. Somebody else, like basically downtown's going to recover because enough people want it to stay that Absolutely. way and that they're going to stick it out. It's a very resilient city. I, well, I love it. <clears throat> so basically what I was doing is that I was warning against courting a company, putting all your eggs in the basket and all your hopes into that one company. We need to diversify and make sure that we've got additional industries in Detroit <laughs> so that this never happens to us again. I agree. That's really cool. And you're using blood money as kind of your platform to get that out there. Or, or uh, uh, one way to get that out yeah, there. I yeah, I even said that Quicken Loans basically puts their name up on the ambassador building. Yeah. Just because it's like, we're we're counting on them this much and we don't need to do that. That's dangerous with any company. You yeah, cannot no, do I agree. that. We have other companies starting to come down there, which is really cool. You start to see Charter One, Chase Bank is now down there. Um, uh, Quicken Loans is actually in the Compuware building, which Compuware was the original company that was down there, um, and Compuware is, is strong. It's one of the industry providers for customized software, so POS units probably that are even in this store. Um, a lot of that software is designed at Compuware. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're, it's starting to. We now have a Whole Foods, which is really cool. I was just talking about that today. The Whole Foods down there. So we're, we're getting stores back in Detroit. Um, it was sad to see such great stores leave, or yeah. great companies leave. Like, um, you saw the grocery stores leave in the 80s and throughout yeah. the 90s, and now they're coming it's back. It's still, like, even in, like, New Center, we need more. Because New Center, Absolutely. of all the businesses, is still technically a food desert. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and I, I think that's ridiculous. It, we need a grocery store definitely in that area and other areas. In, in, in the outskirt areas where you're not getting them anymore. We, the first Myers came back in. I think there's two Myers in all of Detroit. And Detroit's a big place. If you guys don't know, Detroit is bigger than Manha Manhattan, Boston, and L.A. put together in square footage. It's a really big city as far as, as land, but not as population. We're not as dense. Um, but there is. There's horrible food deserts, and, and you have these party stores you know, we call them party stores here in Michigan. I guess they do guys in the liquor house. stores. You guys call them, yeah. yeah. You guys call them convenience stores or liquor stores. 
So if you're not in Michigan, we call them party stores, and they are just having, you know, fruit or vegetables, but they're not great. You're not getting the best quality. Yeah, you walk in on it and you see like two potatoes on a shelf. Have you wrote about the uh, urban farming yet in your articles? You know, we're going to be tackling that in the sequel for Blood Money. That like, is very Blood Money cool. To next, I'm we part of that. a movement um, off a of seven mile in seventy five. That's an urban farm. It's about eleven acres, and we also do cattle and. Um, Montfort cattle, which are really small, cute cows. It's sort of sad to eat them. Um, but that's what they're for. It's, it's, to, it's to train kids. This is what you do. We have the chickens, and we have the turkeys, and we have uh, hogs, which are different than pigs, because the pig is a pet. <laughs> but we have these big hogs, and we have some goats, and, um, and then there's a bunch of acreage of just anybody comes and picks it. It's a community garden that's like six or seven blocks. Um, and I love that movement. It's, it's great, and it sh it, I think Detroit is leading the way, and how is how the future cities sh should be um yeah no it's cool see i, I predicted that you guys were gonna go just <laughs> on and on about the try i, I knew what like i called some it people um they weren't happy with me when i talked about uh quick and loans in the book because i think that they probably felt that i was attacking Gan dan gilbert which no i'm not happy with the way that he's done things he's a good aggressive guy he yeah <laughs> i've um i've met him heard some rumors <laughs> that are coming out now um, the tween journalist on Facebook, and I'm not he's, gonna repeat he's, them. he's an aggressive guy. Yeah, I can vouch for that. Yeah. Um, but you put your you put your political commentary in um, in Blood Money. Um, do you do that in any of your other works? Come seeing uh, you know Odyssey is on here as well. Yes. Um, what is Odyssey? Yeah. The, uh, is it part Odyssey. of the same world? No. Okay, that so is it's different. Work. So what it is is I was approached to write a comic book about a young boy in Detroit who uh, is from what we call Old Midtown. Okay. And basically, at that point, um, it's you're, it's very, very far into the future. We have 2282. 2282, okay. Okay. So, Oliver is born in a poor family, and in that world, uh, there are some people who are, are, you know, super powered, and they use them to become pilots in the space program. It's a space academy downtown, and... They, the children who are super powered, they go into the school to train to become pilots. Now, in the first, how book, are they super powered? Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, same are they thing. Just are born. They are like, born what, with what, it. What do they have? Like, can they fly themselves? It's, or are they um, super strength? Are they like Captain I think, like, America? That super. Oliver had like a, he was backed into a corner in the first issue, and all of a sudden he just has this shield that just comes up because That's of cool. emotionally response. Okay. But the police come because they detect it, and they put Oliver in a, a juvenile detention facility and then it goes into the second issue which is actually based off of Ferguson and talks about crowd control and how it becomes very sinister because Oliver must now enroll in this school or if he doesn't pass the school's very very high standardized test which is almost impossible for him to pass he will be put in detention facility forever yeah oh. Wow. And that's what happens to kids. And the thing is, the test is rigged to um, accommodate rich children who have that education to pass it. <clears throat> Oliver doesn't have that training, and so he's got to overcome it somehow, or else he's going to be in jail. Is he the main character? He is the main character. Very cool. So, and there are aliens called the Necros? Yes. As well? Okay. Oh, this is um, also in Detroit also. Yeah. Yes. This is neat. Are a lot of your works Detroit-centric? Um, that client wanted me to create work that was in Detroit, mm -hmm. so I just wrote and I put all the social commentary ever in it, but in a way that it's geared towards children. Okay. So it was really interesting to go from Blood Money, which is an adult book, but not like explicit adult, but just adult, and then write sort of like that social commentary book for kids, <laughs> but also make it on a, in a way that a child could read it in one level an adult could read it on another level so that neither would feel like they're being preached to. Like Sesame Street. Nice. Have you seen the new Sesame Street? I've not seen this. That's, that's how I feel Sesame Street is. It's very very intellectual if you're an adult. Or, you know, it caters to, you know, with the pop stuff. I think that's cool, though, that you there's those levels yeah. that adults can get. And the great thing is that um, you could read it as a kid, and I've done this with other works, and then you go reread it, and it's a you get other things all of a sudden, and it's great the second time around, like six years later when, you, when you're older when or you whatever. you get the other references, yeah. yeah. That's no, always really, really cool. cool. It's like a new book. <clears throat> no, that's cool. That's that's very, very cool what you do there. 
Thank you. And uh, we see upcoming works. Uh, tell us more about the transhuman resources. Is it, this is your cyber? That was a, a client um, asked me to create a cyberpunk book. Mm -hmm. He wrote the script. Um, it was pitched, and uh, basically he has the rights to it. But um, that one took place in the UK. The writers from the UK. So it was my first international work. Awesome. So yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> it, it's a, it was still indie, but you know it feels really cool to have that work overseas. And this was one of your works that was influenced by one of your first loves, uh, Ghost in the Shell. Ghost we were talking Shell. about. Yeah. Very so cool. in, uh, I have. Yeah, the original, pull your stuff out. The original Ghost in the Shell? Yes. I want to say, he also wrote uh, Eden this, of the East. This is Blood Money. I bought the original line work. That is oh, a whole. Oh, so this is, this is what this goes is into making book. a comic right here. This is what goes into this. making So the Blood Money that I have here. I like it in this style it. better because it fits into my book bag. <laughs> So this is the very first panel you see shrunk, in that's Blood Money. the size that it gets shrunk Yeah, it gets shrunk too. down to this. I think it is. Oh, hang on. You okay there, Conrad? Yep. <laughs> do, do you need some help? And there. Ta-da. <laughs> so this is not messing word. around. This is actually really, really cool. And who's your, do you have a colorist? Because I, I remember seeing it colored. Me. So you do color it before I'm, it goes to print, right? I'm pretty much the one woman factory. Now, Jamie helped me wanna, to do the flats, the flat colors, but I was the one who embellished and did all the shadow work and color but correction. Your, your comic's not black and white, is it? No. no. I, I remember Only seeing one it. comic I've done is monochrome, and that's on the periphery right now. There's a good shot of uh, Jack and Just. Next to the Ambassador Bridge. Next to the Ambassador Bridge, <laughs> where I think this was car. this was just after Jack was uh, buried <laughs> underground because he's a vampire and he yeah. can't stay out during the day, so he had to sleep underground during the day while just was doing you know stuff around uh, the Motor City at the time in the future. <laughs> so this is Ugh. Transhuman Resources. This is the cyberpunk oh, stuff. Yeah, this. Since oh, they were overseas, I they like your get style. Yeah, yeah, this is and this is uh, this is one of the one of the first pages in the uh, uh, Asher Collective uh, dot com um, dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool. Very cyberpunky. I dig it a lot. I I um, I see this and my mind instantly goes to Shadowrun, the um, RPG, which is set in the future as well. And video um, games. Yes, there's video games for our... A really fun. horrible 360 game. <laughs> yeah, see, 360 Are these in a particular order? Well, if I get these out of order. No yeah. <laughs> have you ever played so, the big game? So I haven't, actually. My panel work in that one, Blood Money was my first um, I do, I really comic, like it. And now my panel work is getting tighter in that one. And you can see kind of the evolution, especially Ooh, with yeah, this Yeah, this is page. beautiful right here. That this was one amazing. of the best, yeah. Looks like some sort of struggle Yeah. here. Lots of... Uh, I like how they feel real. Like there's... Your, the characters look like there's sustenance to them. They're not these... I, I, I hate to say it, but like they're not. Mayor Duggan. Someone was like, "Is that Mayor here? Duggan?" I was like, "No, he's just an Asian guy." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mayor Duggan, but, but that's not you. I feel like so many characters in books, they all are made from the same model, and I'm, then they're I'm just. Gonna, does that make sense? I'm yeah. gonna throw um, Robert Kirkman under the bus as far as the later issues, like in the first book of The Walking Dead, like the characters. Maybe slightly more cartoony, but they all had their own feel. They all yeah. like were their own characters. After that, they switched art uh, artists or something, and I, now all the characters look the same to me. It's still a great story, yeah. but I miss that that art. And, I, and and your art really kind of shows like these are different people. Thank you. You know, yeah, they no, do a really like good that. job at that. They all have a character. They all have a soul. You know. Now, where you see blank pages on the uh, blank space on these pages, that means that I fill it in with texture because I've got this really bad thing about I hate negative space. Well, you actually you grab some comics as you examples of, of art that you yeah. like and don't like. So if now, you want to show those, I made a lot of those things space. in the first and Blood Money. There's uh -huh. a lot of negative space, and I just made a lot of mistakes. But um, I was going to talk about um, you know Ooh. the really cheap starter guide and this. creating. Oh, yeah. Blam! Is, <laughs> is that a spoiler alert? Should we not show this? That's what is this fine. part again? Um, that's... What is this? That's in Transhuman Resources, Transhuman. and the guy gets, okay. gets uh, Blam. shot. Can I see this? Can I see this spoiler, panel? Yeah. Are they in the, and are they in order? Um, yeah. Okay, let's keep them in order, then. Okay, yeah. Well, well I, they're, they're kind of not in order now. That's also And you do this with pen pages. and pencil? Um, okay. Pencil, and then I go over it with um, Petek. V5 pen. Very specific pen that is getting more and more expensive every year. What do they run? 
Um, they're about like five dollars for two pens. And how long do they last? They last um, if you're consistently drawing, then they'll last you a couple of months, I think. Okay. Was that page twelve? Okay. It was by Pentec. Pentec or a Pilot V5 pen. I can't remember what it's called anymore. Who makes them? V5 Precise Pen. I'm putting this Who back in order them? for you. I think by it's the either way, Pilot or Pentec. Okay, Pentec or Pilot, send her pens. Yeah. She can just keep doing this. <laughs> these are awesome. Nothing. He's sending me these, too. These Canson. This is what I draw in so that my, my little really basic scanner can pick up. The, the drawing area is 8.5 by 11, so anybody who wants to just start making comics can use regular copy paper, but you've got to... That's the live area, and that's what I always draw this within. This is just too cool. So it's Canson. You can pick this up at, at Blick Art Materials. And it's a Canson 10 by 14 board if you just want to get started at home. It's heavyweight. Or you yeah, can use copy solid. paper. And I also ink with, I brought my... Yeah, more show and tell. I dig this. This is neat to see how it's actually made. I've never seen how yeah. a comic book's made. I, I knew a little bit of it, but I've never actually had my hands on it. So that's cool. Um, I can, I hey, use... Oh my. I like it. I just want to put these back in order. I sort of want that now on my wall. Right? It's really cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out there. If yeah. you ever need to model any characters after two guys, uh, oh my, we'll, we'll volunteer. Just give you a heads like up. You want to use our likeness? Oh, was that the ink oh, for the? Oh no! Well, the thing is, you put it in a plastic bag because I knew this was gonna happen. But this oh. is a this is a green bottle of Japanese ink, and you get it at Lick Art Materials as well. And it's so beautiful, and it dries so well that the ink will shine. Really? And that's what it all of these are. Are drawn with the major large areas that are colored in, like her hair. You can see the shine of the ink. Oh, yeah. It registers differently when it's scanned in, and it's so it's so uh, fine. It's such a fine ink mm -hmm. that a sharpie could never compare. Really, and this sharpie is uh, this is uh, December, one of the characters in Blood Money. In Blood Money, where yes. she's 50 years old, but in that one she's 25, because in the next book we're gonna go back in time. Ooh, so gotta pay attention. So to yeah, so the, the our universe spans about four hundred years, four hundred, and we'll, In we'll see where else it goes. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, just, just How many books are going to be in Blood Money when you're finished? Do you know? Um, we have so far we have written seven, seven manuscripts, oh, cool. and because the other world is going to be a this is from, actually... Can the Other World, which is the sequel to Blood Money. This is the, from the novel version of Blood Money. Okay. I, have you ever looked it up? It looks like a leather-bound black I Bible. saw that. And Ooh. that is, and what I did was inspired by medieval art. So I did medieval, this one got, this one got like <laughs> water on it. So I have to keep it, that's mine. Okay. So basically it's inspired by medieval art. It's very elaborate, very, very dark. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, I took the characters, and what I did is I made them look like a medieval person with no sense of modern technology okay. is looking at them and going to illustrate them. So he sees them completely differently. So you get to see the story from a different perspective. Perspective, yeah. And that's from the novel version. And that was really, really fun. And this is a hint at the real enemy, who is not revealed Do you know in the graphic is? novel version. Are you it's hinted me? at the very end. Yeah. Uh, this looks like... Is this Anubis? And it, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. The hieroglyphic on his chest means the god of, of death. So Anu Anubis. So Anubis. Right? No. Yeah. No, not Anubis. not Anubis? Who's the Who's god the of death? death? Is, that's not Ra. Ra's the sun god. Only Jamie knows the answer right now. Oh, okay. okay. So you'll have to find out in the All next right. book. Cause, and this is also, to compare, this is December when she's 50. Really? She ages so really you, well. So like, if you look at, um, where is that image of her? It's right down there. So Did this is her in her 20s and her in her 50s? It's not bad. Oh, she's doing pretty well for herself. <laughs> you change, like, I you know, her. her eyebrows and everything are still the same, but obviously she's younger. So I think, no. like, somebody was saying, oh, she doesn't look like she's 50, and I'm like, that's because you haven't seen her when she's 25. Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. You know, I mean, it's she's a she's a good looking fifty, but I, <laughs> but I could see a fifty there, yeah. especially compared to this one. It's yeah. yeah. You never know what kind of creams they have in the future. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. It's, Plus, it's fifteen it's like years in our future. Inspired, so all my people yeah. end up looking a bit younger. <laughs> um, 
Uh, this woman, Eunice, the woman underneath uh, Trans Human Resources, she's not young either. She's about in her forties. Okay. So. Very neat. I like I like drawing people who are not always young. I like writing about people who are not always young because I I don't like the way television just writes about you're 23 and you're 25 and 27 and it's kind of it's kind of boring, you mm -hmm. know. It's and how boring. the only way you get to the older characters is if you grew up with them like in Friends, you know, how you don't get to their late 30s there, until you go through their mid 20s. Or only plot devices. Yes. And that's boring. Now this is a sequel. To Blood Money. Blood Money. Blood Money. Now there you see this guy, Eric, Eric Descarta. He's, uh, He's teased a little bit in Blood Money because yeah. I saw him in it. He is a programmer from Long Island. He is um, he end up he ends up getting lost in that other world where we're going to talk about where ma where magic is is really based. Mm -hmm. So in the next book we're going to have wizards and sorcery. Is the other world literally an other world? Yes, it is. Okay. They don't know probably what to why they call live in it. trees. It's like in in our in our universe, sometimes people don't have names for what they're seeing. So they don't have a name for it. There's no agreed upon name, so it's just the other world. Is Corso are we supposed to see that? Is that let's say is that is that, is that giving something away? No. Oh no, you're like no, it's not. Can I see that's it? Cor yeah. that says Corso and that's Corso right there. Wait, what? That's Corso. This is Corso. He's that's Corso. Oh, this right? is Corso, that's that guy. Corso. Oh, from the um on the Asher Collective website that's you have you have a few panels of this upcoming comic. That is Corso. And this is like the very first one. Yes. Where he's writing the letter. Oh, okay. So we'll, you gotta check this website I, like, out. It's owe really cool. The light. I guess I owe it to people because I've been like really late in coloring these in and I just kind of stopped because I got busy with uh, Red Bull House of Art so mm -hmm. I decided to bring the line work to try and make up for it. Now all the colors there you see it's it's very empty that's because mm -hmm. filling it in with all those beautiful tree work and and you yeah, know, the panels the on the website you filled all this in. I filled all this yeah. in because stickler for empty spaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, Just like that, super empty space. Yeah. Which th this is the, at, at this point, this is not on the website yet. That is not on the website. Because that what we just yet. saw, this is the very last thing that we can see yes. as far as other world goes. So I can, I'll be happy to Should tell that that story. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> because there's another half of the story that I'm not putting up yet, and I'll reveal it. When this is all taken in 1971. All, all these panels. Yeah. So this guy, he's leaving his family. We know that so far he has left his family. Has written a letter, and he has done this because he's gay. And okay. this happened right after Stonewall, pretty much. So he's what the rest Stonewall of the line of the Stonewall riots in New York. Okay. And he lives in Long Island, so this was pretty close to him. Okay. And I called the Hempstead Society, the Hempstead Historical Society in Long Island, and I asked him some questions about how much of an effect did the Stonewall riots have on them. Hmm? And they said it wasn't really like there wasn't any real like violence there, but. I decided that, you know, because he's gay, it affects him. Yeah. And There's probably still some so adverse effect he was going through, yeah. He, um... Looks he like he goes, wandered into and he's somewhere, because down wandered here, into the new, yeah. Yeah, different dimension. Can you say how they get there? Is there, like, a oh, way yeah, it the, happens? Oh, yeah. Oh, he was, he was in line for the restroom when the Greyhound bus stops, and he decided to go use it in the woods. So, you know, he's a guy who's just going to go cop a squat out there. So he ends up walking, and all of a sudden everything looks different. Now he starts calling I'm sure all for this anybody, in, yeah. yeah, and suddenly he remembers his daughter and he regrets, and he just thinks, what have I done? I can't believe I left my family. And I wanted to make the point that even though, even though you're gay, even though you need, you feel that you shouldn't live a lie anymore, you're still a parent, so don't forget your kids if you have them. This is his daughter? That's his daughter. Do we know who his daughter is? We will not say. Okay, because she, she looks a little familiar. And we will not say. Okay, we, all right. Yeah, I was going to say, she sort of looks familiar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then he comes upon the tree house. Which is... Crusoe's. We saw, we, yeah, Notice we saw. the rock is missing. There's oh. no rock because he doesn't live there yet. He doesn't live there yet. Oh, okay. All right. Then we cut, and this is 2010. Okay, so we so jumped. So here's this dude, and this is the guy from the, the character preview. The first panel we saw. And he's driving. And he's talking to his wife. Yeah, he's doing really well for himself. Yeah. He's pretty good on the Hempstead actually has a really big, like, IT technical um, industry there. Mm -hmm. And she's got lots of cats, too. <laughs> yeah, I about to say, she's a cat lady. She's a cat lady. So then lightning is flashing, and it's a storm. And all of a sudden, there's, like, lightning and everything. 
his car veers off the oh, road, no. and then all of a sudden... He has a little hatchback. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a tiny car. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he crashes into it. Um, there are chickens. Yeah, there are chickens. Tiny little chickens. Tiny. Yeah. All right. So he appears, and all of a sudden... Oh, whoa! Anthropomorphic guy. Yep. So... Cat guy. They show up, and then she says, Corso. She's calling for him. Calling so for the guy who Corso. left his family. Okay. Exactly. And who comes out? Old Corso. Old Corso. Okay, and bye. there's going to be a second half. So. That is neat. There's 16 I want to see pages. how that ties into blood money. So that. Is <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. It's a lot. It's a lot. And now t- with 2010, this is 20 years before blood money happens. Yes. Yeah. So. Hmm. Right, you will see young just. You'll see young Jack. He's gonna see how they. Jack start already out. looks pretty young. Jack I wonder already, why. Wonder why. Wonder why. Maybe because he's a vampire. That, we said in the novel he is perpetually thirty-one because he was thirty-one when he was good age. Good age. <laughs> just saying. And he never grew up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's all. He just remained the same. Now, real fast, I want to touch. I want to touch on on, on these. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Because you you grab them specifically. And I know that you love Reanimator, but you yes. said that this is an example of what not to do. <laughs> why? In, in your humble opinion. This is why because I don't know why. Can this you teach is us? good. This is okay. Oh, and this is okay. So this is good. Okay, bad. Now, when you're making comics, and this is my thing about negative space, and I cannot talk because I've made these mistakes in the past. But you've learned from them. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a lot. Your eye travels this way. Yeah. But what's here? Nothing. When you get to here, there's absolutely nothing, nothing. in this space. Red, that's Ma- it. Red is great for attracting the viewer to look at the item on the shelf. And that is why a lot of creators will resort to red. Uh-huh. This is why with our first comic, we didn't take chances. And you I put red. red as the I cover. Huh? I was really, I was like, I deliberately made it that way. No, now, this, yeah, one this one is flat. We and love this, this character. Squirrel Girl's amazing, show. by the way, and I love that art. That's really cool. It's really nostalgic, and that's it's great. Cute. Now the problem is that it's flat, and there's and I know that it's supposed to be for the a sake video of game-ish. video games. Yeah. But even SNK and and uh, uh, Street Fighter had the sense of depth in their video game art. And this is why I say it is just okay, even when though they take up the whole space. When you fought in the bathhouse, the there were people in the bathhouse that were, were in towels watching in the background. And there was also atmospheric perspective in the background. Yep. Now, this one's really good. This one is really good, and the reason why is because your eye goes up. And there we have red at the Also because very it's Rat end. Queen, which is amazing. Yeah. Yep. So it goes up like it's a big triangle like this. Then if when you look to either side, that's your exit. Fine artists will call this area the exit because this is when you pretty much stop looking at the painting or what we have here the canvas the mm-hmm. canvas so this has all the elements um i would have made this bigger but that's not my decision i'm sure they know what they're doing mm-hmm. um but that that's basically good okay bad okay and a little bit of an art Can lesson there because <laughs> because i i can't draw i have stupid clumsy hands but i i, I enjoy comics and you're and you're right. Even though. even not knowing what I'm looking at, I can tell like okay, eh, I'm not as big of a fan as that one as I am of this one. And maybe that's because they didn't draw some more reanimated corpses up here, possibly, or put something in the background. Like I don't know. You're, it, it seems like it's lacking. Some texture, even or yeah. clouds or something, yep. would have been okay. So so you're right. Like you explained what my eyes already saw. Like, I couldn't put it into words, which is pretty cool, so thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> and I think you just found a new uh, comic for Lucas over here. Squirrel Girl versus it's Galactus. Not, it's not really, it's just like, a, there's not much to it. Well, I feel sorry for Galactus. He's gonna get his butt he kicked. Is. I already Squirrel know Girl. how that ends. Yeah, with Squirrel, Squirrel Girl winning. winning. <laughs> Are you familiar with Squirrel Girl? Um, I haven't read her stuff yet, no. Uh, uh, so the Marvel ca- world... It's almost like a running joke. It's, yeah. She started off as a joke. She is the most powerful character in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> she's she's a, actually she's the a babysitter yeah. for the Avengers. She's she's a uh, a mutant who has a um, squirrel-like tail, and she has the agility, speed, and strength of a squirrel. So kind of like Spider-Man in that sense. She has the tail to give her balance. I think she has little buck teeth in the front, kind of like a squirrel. And she can also mentally communicate with squirrels. 
So she talks to them. She gets them to do things. She had a, a sidekick named Monkey Joe, who was a squirrel, like her main go-to squirrel. And for whatever reason, Marvel decided to pit her up against some of the most major villains in the universe, Doctor Doom, and have her win. Well, she she, t- she doesn't even struggle. She beat up uh, Deadpool. She doesn't even struggle. She's in beating these. up Wolverine. Um, and so she's kind of like this teenage powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, but she but her but she powers, doesn't really want to be. Her powers never go beyond what we described, but for some reason she's always the winner. Now, if you go to the Marvel website, they have power readouts of uh, all their characters. Like, Hulk is obviously 10 in strength. 7, I think, is the size they go to. Um, okay, so 7 in strength. 7 in strength, maybe 2 in intelligence, because he's the Hulk. Um, and then you have other characters. Bruce like, Banner, 7 like, in intelligence. Exactly. Um, so you see the Marvel ranking, and you see the fan ranking, because the fans can, you know, get their opinions in on him. You go to the fan ranking of Squirrel Girl, it's all pretty across the board, very similar to Spider-Man, you know, maybe four strength, maybe five agility, maybe three intelligence, but Marvel's ranking of her, all sevens. Across the board. We don't know why. She's the most powerful character. I don't think she's ever lost. She joins teams, and then she quits them because she's like, you guys are really depending on me. I kind of want you to do your own thing. (laughs) This is the uh, Great Lakes Avengers. She was like, you know what? You guys are really kind of depending on me. I want you to be your own people. Good old Midwest girl. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, kind of step back and let you guys have your own identity. I'm going to go out of the superhero biz, and I'm going to babysit for the Avengers. Howard the Duck yet? I don't know. That'd be funny. Has she not crossed over with Howard the Duck? No. I have no idea. I don't think There's so. one scene where um, I think Emma Frost goes into Wolverine's mind, and she's kind of navigating his mind in this corridor, and she opens a door into his sexual fantasies, and Wolverine's tied to a um, to, 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 to a, a table, and in the fantasy, you have Jean Grey, Emma Frost, and Squirrel Girl. Who's <laughs> my Wolverine? Which, oh, that's oh, cool. Oh, this is a really cool Wolverine. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so you don't know what her past is Wolverine. Like, she's just this really neat character. And if you're in the know as far as, like, well, somewhat in the know as far as comics go, Squirrel Girl, like, you gotta love her. You just can't not. She's in her late teens, early 20s, I believe. I think she's early 20s now. Yeah. Though after Secret War, who knows what's gonna happen. Um, there's one more thing I want to say. Yes, please. Just not to yank your attention. No, it's not. No, absolutely. Um, she's coming to Detroit. She... She's like, the female Batman for Detroit, and that, that those are my that's my plan for her. Oh, okay. okay. So I was about to say, is she based be, off a of character? She's the female she's what? coming to Detroit, female Batman, basically, oh. except she's really, she's not a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> except cool. she's not a jerk and she's not rich. But, but yeah, I just wanted to say that because I'm really excited to have a superhero, motorcycle, common rider, Power Ranger person in is, Detroit. Is this going to be in other worlds she does this, or is this in, a, in another... She's going to have... It's 16 more pages, and it's mm-hmm. going to be in um, a part of this issue that I'm finishing up, but she will be in Detroit. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank you for being on the show today. Yes. Thank you for oh joining us with Comic thank Book you. Day here at Second and Charles. Couldn't have had a better person. Can, can the Establishing <laughs> Shot get this amazing wall that we always talk about? Because we've never actually had it, I don't think. Is it in there? So behind us is this wall made out of uh, different books. Which Kelly fell in love with. Those are actually it. books. <laughs> Those are books that they made to look like it's Second and Charles. It says Second, and then the words and Charles are down here. Some of them are diced in half for the sake of needing to dice them in half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a really cool place, guys. Come out and check it out. What else do we need to talk about? Uh, well, Kelly, first off, can you tell us, um, is there any place, we already talked about the AsherCollective.com. Is there any other place people can go to look at your work or to read your articles and everything? Um, I think we've got everything linked. Uh, the periphery. Um, okay. I think it's periphermag.com. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll send you the correct link. Yeah, and then uh, we'll, we'll get it over to the Corey. He'll be able to and that work magic has with a, it. That has a, a funny comic about how I met Jamie, my, co, my co-owner mm-hmm. for Asher Collective. And it's really funny because we actually met through an online game. Mm-hmm. And so we and it you takes say place game? in World of Warcraft. Okay. Yeah. Very now, cool. it's not exactly like World of Warcraft, meaning some diehards are going to be like, well, then your usernames don't allow numbers. I'm like, come on. You got to chill out, man. <laughs> you got to chill out. Like, Reddit hated. Reddit was not very nice to me about the comic. But whatever, guys. But it's really funny because her character, she's a tiny person in real life. But her character is this giant Torin bully. <laughs> Very cool. Who <laughs> was a PKer. So um, I think that's the only other work, really. Um, and I'll send you links to everything else that is available online to read. She was a Torin. What were you? 
I am an I was an undead mage. Undead, nice. Because I like for the people to do the work for me, so I send out the guys. Mm -hmm. Go go kill that dude. Oh, surprised you weren't a warlock. Warlocks are big into that too. Okay. I was a ranger. I like being micro. Elf. I like to micromanage. My gotcha. Fights. <laughs> cool. Um, thank you again for being on the yes, show. Uh, amazing. It's, it's free comic book day. Like once again, uh, we're gonna be here next week on Saturday, May 9th. So check us out here. We'll be teaching board games. You can even just come up and chat with us. We always love to talk. We love hanging out with uh, viewers and listeners and fans. Like we're, it makes us feel cool. <laughs> you can bring you can bring Conrad a, a cherry coke. He loves that stuff. I do. So uh, there's that. We allowed to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what yeah. happens. He's like, yeah, cherry okay, coke. I'm <laughs> for it. I love but cherry coke. I want to say thank you for watching, guys. Yes. Uh, we, again, we are at Second and Charles. Amazing. Um, the website secondandcharles.com. That sound uh, accurate? There's really no. There's Corey, no yeah, there's Corey really says it on is on their website. Well, you can still go to it. Uh, they have a Facebook, which is 2NC Arburn Hills. You can link, uh, we'll, we'll have Facebook. them up. You can link them through us on our Facebook Absolutely. as well, which is therackshow.com. Uh, yes. Keep watching uh, Voxfee's YouTube channel, voxfee.com. Uh, we pushed this, I think, last week. We'll push it again. Pod Apocalypse that we did at Midwest Media Expo is now up. It is a little adult. Actually, it's very adult content. But it's also really awesome. It's definitely something to check out. I think we found a new staple as far as the con scene goes. It's we, good fun. We if struck gold with it. If you're a minor, mm, probably not for mm, you. Let's go. Um, We've warned you. Watch our Next Generation it's episode from last season. not our fault now season. if yeah. you watch it. Okay. Um, our hands are <laughs> off of it. But once again... Thanks for watching. Yes, uh, this has been Season 3, Episode 7 of The Rack Show. Thank you so much for watching. We will talk to you next time. Peace, guys. And read more comics. Yeah. I pulled a Will Wheaton on that. You did. We were just playing more games, read more comics. Especially Squirrel Girl. Absolutely. Come buy this one, Daredevil, 70 bucks. <laughs> yes, and Blood Money. And Blood Money, which might be sold here. Uh -huh. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hello, ladies. Hello. How are you? Now, you, a citizen nerd is your yep. guys' official designation? Yep. Yes. Up next, the awesome Ivan Owen. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, the co-creator of the original 3D printed hand. I inadvertently, with somebody else, created the, the first uh, 3D printed partial hand uh, prosthetic device. Anyway, on Nearly Useless Entertainment, we got Alex and Kevin over here. Hi, guys. Yeah. Hello. Hello. They only pinned me twice, by the way. Just that give you a heads up. Wrong. They only got... Yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Check your underwear. I only got it no. twice. Oh. Uh, if I'm wearing it, never mind. <laughs> I'm uh, wearing a robe. I'm here for comfort.